realize a mother is gonna walk around talking shit about you when you're the one who dumped them. It isn't gonna look very good to anyone with experience in relationships. Really dumb girls hold up signs explaining why they're against feminism. You people are so fucking stupid. This is me explaining not only why some girls are against feminism, but why you're. Hey, what's up, guys? I recently got yet another YouTuber to hate me. <sighs> it's almost as if this is my way of getting street cred or loser cred. I don't know. Check this out. I made a general statement saying. And offensive, because that's what an easy gun's good for. Ha <laughs> ha, that's why I clicked on this video. Ha <laughs> ha, I don't go to an offensive person's channel. I click on that same offensive person's videos, and then act all so fucking prize. When he says something. Nonsense shit for views. He got all the words. He wants to say that. He's like, he's a dick to everybody. You want to know why? Because shit you do online can affect you in real life. Hello folks, today we are going to explore the year 2014 for the infamous YouTuber Onision. This is technically the fifth part in a series. In the first part, we talked about Onision's early life. The second part explored his most controversial year up to where we are now. And the rest was exploring the fallout from that disastrous year. In this video, we are in 2014, three years after that disastrous year, and the fire was finally settling for this greasy-haired YouTuber. This part is going to be considerably more lighthearted, as we are just going to see what he did for the year, despite there not being anything too juicy. My process of doing this is I read various boards and wikis discussing Onision, as well as Google search any mentions of him in this year while also using the YouTube search function to see if any video title stands out to me. It's going to just be a review of his content over the year. So please, come join me in my little journey into Onision during 2014. So we begin this journey with a general note. Sometime during this year, and the previous year, Greg's channel, Uh Oh Bro, committed to only making reaction videos. This was noted on the Life of Onion wiki. Also, January 2014 brings a great joy to Onision and his spouse's life. His spouse was known as Lainey at the time. And sometime during the early part of the month, Lainey gave birth to their first child. Apparently, according to posts on the Onision drama tumblr, Lainey went into labor around the 6th as one post reads, Lainey is in labor. Her sister tweeted it. If they didn't want everyone to know when the baby was coming, they should have told her sister to be quiet. This didn't go too well, as apparently people who talked about Lainey going into labor were verbally attacked. Though, the only evidence of this were posts on the Onision drama tumblr. One post on the 6th read, Apparently, if you post a simple tweet about Lainey going into labor, her family and Greg's family start attacking you verbally. 300% done with Onion. Another post read, Lainey's sister is attacking fans for stalking her sister, when they didn't even stalk her. She tweeted Lainey was in labor, and the girl tweeted that she thought Lainey didn't want anyone to know about the baby's arrival. So her sister deleted the tweet and attacked the girl until she deleted her Twitter. Greg, on the same day around these alleged attacks, posted a video to the Onision Speaks channel titled, Cut the Cutter. In the video, Greg shames a person in a situation going through mental health issues, saying that he had dated plenty of people who were crazy. I've been with um, quite a few people that are nuts. Uh, people who have cut themselves, and yes, I do think people who cut themselves are nuts. And that every crazy girl had cheated on him. Because I've been with crazy girls before. And you know what crazy girls do? <laughs> well, every single one has cheated on me. That's that's the, the beginning of it. They aren't, they're f***ing moral as Crazy girls are immoral. And then claimed that he never did anything wrong in these relationships. And a lot of times that involves making them seem like the good guy and me seem like the bad guy. Despite me having done very little to nothing wrong. He concludes that you should not date someone who cuts themselves. This would not be the only time in the next year Greg spoke negatively against cutters. And this tactic would definitely alienate his audience of young women who would come to him for advice. People on the Onision drama tumblr believed Onision was talking about cutters to distract people from the fact that his spouse had just had a child. Onision posted another video about cutters on the 9th called The Honest Cutter. This video is lost to time as he removed it, and no archives exist of it that I could find. But judging by popular YouTuber Tom Scuzz, response, it was probably similar to his previous video in that he shamed people dealing with mental illness. Tomska tweeted, linking the video, writing, ha 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 ha, at Onision is such a f***ing scumbag, oh my goodness, may our paths never cross. Onision's audience also was not happy about this video, as shown by people commenting on him posting it to his Facebook. One person comments, this isn't funny. Another person comments, that is not right. 
I used to cut, but this is offensive. Somebody else comments on the post, writing, It's not that you can't joke about this issue. It's that you don't address it with a grain of salt. You generalize the issue to you're the problem and your emotions have no meaning. Change them and you will change yourself. As if humans can change their feelings and emotions. Many of these people have actual problems, if not physically, then mentally, and they typically can't help these thoughts and feelings they have. Yes, it may be stupid to cut, but you're not in that person's mind, and saying the wrong things can lead to worse actions for a cutter. Maybe even suicide. The issue is not a light one and you should take it a bit more serious and not just bash on people who don't deserve it. Another commenter writes, why can't you be more serious when you come to serious topics? Another comment, yeah, kind of cross the line here, bud. Also on the 9th, Onision uploaded a video to his speaks channel titled, Our Redundant Lives. I added this video to my timeline of the year because it was almost as a theme for the year. I mentioned this year was not that dramatic, and in this video, Onision talks about how being reactionary is not efficient. Like if you are, are very uh, reactive to things that people say, like if somebody says something you don't like, if you get very pump fueled, uh, angry, etc. Um, do you think that's efficient? What would you what would you compare an emotional outburst to uh, as far as an operating system's daily activities goes? He also talked about cutting for some reason. You could talk about cutting. You know how in, in an operating system, how does uh, cutting help you? Uh, operating system or a computer that harms itself, let's say, discharges too much electricity and starts to fry the boards, but not all the way, just making them a little bit less functional. And he also talks about focusing on being better in the future. That everything you experience is pretty much insignificant. Okay, everything I experience is pretty much insignificant. So why don't we all focus on something that actually means something, which is progress, change, improvement. <laughs> Just generally being more effective as a human being. I don't know what this was a direct response to, but I saw it as if Greg was telling himself and his audience he was moving on to be better. Next, Lainey returned to social media as a new mother. Though she was keeping her family life private, they tweeted this out on the 12th. The amount of beauty in my life is overwhelming. Feeling so humbled and grateful, I'm truly blessed. On the same day as this, Onision published a video to his Onision Speaks channel called My Mom Called Me Fat about a fan who contacted him about their mom, calling them fat. It's one of Onision's advice videos that he does. And unlike a lot of his other videos where he blames the person, he actually gave somewhat okay advice, at least in my opinion. <laughs> like, uh, if that's, if she's calling her kid fat and useless, etc., no. Parents' perception of their children is the most important in the world to children. You know, like what your parents think of you when you are young, unless you're some kind of abnormal child, what they think of you is extremely important. Honestly, I'm surprised. On January 14th, 2014, Onision published a video titled Facts About Onision, parentheses, story time, to his main Onision channel. The video went over his childhood, that he lived with his two sisters and mom on a farm, and there was something more sinister in it. Greg at one point writes, Onision's mom filed for divorce. Once it was made clear, his father was a child predator. These allegations that Greg brings up on his father have been questioned a great many of times over the years, whether they are valid or not. He also goes into his religious history a bit by writing, Onision was a Seventh-day Adventist till the age of 11, at which point he asked his mom to stop taking him to church. And then he writes that he is now agnostic. He brings up more allegations about his father, writing that his father attacked him at the age of 15, and that resulted in Onision having to go to juvie for three days. Onision would claim that he fought back with his father in self-defense, but in March 2020, his father would go on to be interviewed, writing about the situation. He wrote, During a trip to Nashville, Onision was listening to his music and had it up very, very loud, even though he said he's listening to his headphones. Randy said, I said, Greg, please turn your music down, and he wouldn't do it. So I pulled off on the exit. I stopped, turned around, and said, Greg, turn your music down. It's way too loud. And that's when he went off. He started screaming and was just gonna bolt. He was gonna leave. And so I turned around, unbuckled my seatbelt, and tried to reach and grab his shoulder to keep him from leaving. Debbie was trying to untie his shoes, and he was kicking at me, broke my glasses, and bloodied my nose. Nothing else from this video gave new information that has yet to be discussed in the series. Two days after this video, Onision uploaded another one of his rant videos to his Onision Speaks channel, titled, 
If you lie, stop talking. Onision has an obsession with lying and honesty, titling himself as the most honest YouTuber. I've probably mentioned this before. This video was four minutes of Onision trying to mask how angry he was about being gossiped about on the internet. People online, for example, they'll go online and they'll just make up make up about anybody they want. And that pisses me off. You wanna know why it pisses me off? Because it's like, where's your f***ing integrity? As well as being angry that his past relationships didn't work out so well. Hey, do you love me? <laughs> or, uh, hey, did you uh, take care of that important thing that needed to be done? Because if it wasn't done, then we're in big trouble. Or, hey, are you actively having sex with someone that you shouldn't be having sex with because we're together? Or, hey, um, oh my God, uh, did you kill that person and is that why the cops are after you? <laughs> At least, that is what I assumed it was about. It was just an interesting and weird video to make. There's trolling, there's tro trolling, this is what trolling is. Trolling is like <laughs> That's trolling. It's like making a video about how you hate traffic. Yeah, everyone hates traffic. That goes without saying. Or mosquito bites. Everyone hates mosquito bites. Come on, Flanders. There's got to be something you hate. What about mosquito bites? Mm mm, sure are fun to scratch. Mm, satisfying. Well, mostly everyone. On the 16th of the month, Onision uploaded probably one of the worst songs I've ever had the misfortune to listen to, titled No One Will Remember Your Name. It was a talk sing song where. Actually, in my notes, I just wrote, LOL, edgy. In the song, Onision just repeats a line, you guessed it, no one will remember your name. And he ends the song with, That was the most depressing, crappy song I've ever heard, and that says a lot, because I'm emo. No, it was good. You basically just said, nobody matters and we're all gonna die forgotten. <laughs> yeah, that's emotionally crippling. Nuh-uh. What, are you trying to get your subscribers to kill themselves? You're a nut job. Oh, Charlie. You're gonna get like 10,000 dislikes if you upload that sh Oh, you gonna cry? He definitely thinks this video is deeper than it is, but really it comes off as r slash I'm 13 and this is deep. The day after this, Onision had a bit of a meltdown on his Tumblr. Somebody brought up the old drama that was discussed in a previous part about Onision being a apologist. If you don't remember what that was, it was a label given to him after he made two really unfortunate videos. One where he claimed his ex couldn't be pressured into sex because she had a lot of previous sexual partners. And another video where he implied that there was something wrong with a wife who didn't want to be touched in her sleep. He received an ask from someone about his alleged enabling in the husband and wife scenario, to which Onision responded, And I made another video specifically saying it's not okay to be touched if you don't want to be, married or not. You f***ers took that video completely out of context. I was questioning why they were married if they weren't sexually interested in them. But could you pay attention to the obvious facts? No, you f***ing warped it to make me look like something I'm not, despite me making countless videos blatantly against her. So again, f you for trying to twist what I say. You want to attack someone who's been a major anti anti-abuse, pro-women's rights, and general human rights supporter? You want to focus on the few videos that can be taken out of context and not the mass majority of all my f validating your bullshit claims? F you, f you, f you, you dishonest f bag. F is f***ing wrong. Doesn't matter if you're drunk, married, or whatever, you can still be f and deserve justice. I've made this point painfully f clear, you idiots. Sometime around the 18th of January, the couple posted a bait photo of a baby, to which an anti-O, aka someone who was anti-Onision, responded with, that's one ugly baby. This was not a photo of their actual new child, but was used as an example of why the YouTuber couple won't share pictures of their child, as people who hate them would attack their child to get at them. Someone actually made a Tumblr called onisions-ugly-baby.tumblr.com. If this Tumblr was not made by Onision for victim points, then I don't blame the guy, and some of the people who hate him really go too far. On the 20th of January, Onision made another attempt to piss off the masses with a video entitled The Bible is Garbage. The video is no longer available, but the edgelord that is Greg attempted to annoy religious people by dancing on the Bible and lighting it on fire. He's almost 30 now, folks. 
He did remove this video, but we know of its existence from Tumblr posts, and because he made a follow-up video the next day called, Re, The Bible is Garbage. In this follow-up video, he goes on what I can only describe as a rant that a high school teen would think is cool. The Bible is bad if you take the text literally, and if you take these texts literally, you would do all sorts of bad stuff. He actually thinks cavemen wrote the Bible or some Really? Really? God? That's not God. That's some bullshit man admitted. Maybe there is a god out there and he's actually a pretty f cool dude. Or girl. Or hermaphrodite. Or neither. But this f***ing made up god that cavemen invented in their stupid f***ing primitive brains over 2,000 years ago? Like really? Are you f***ing idiots really following the words of somebody who lived 2,000 years ago? LOL. His burning the Bible was not taken well as people responded to him on Facebook negatively. Greg wrote, The Bible literally instructs its readers to murder gays just for being gay. And you get upset when I burn it? Way to defend hate crimes. Greg did not let this go and posted again, writing, Religion is for people who aren't strong enough to accept the possibility that their life is in fact meaningless and they are not special. To which somebody responds, That's your opinion. I don't know how you've managed to come to the conclusion that you know the mindset of every religious person. Another person writes, If you don't believe in God, that's okay, but you have zero right to put down anyone's religion. Onision did something he did a lot in the previous years on the 24th of January. He uploaded a video where he defends himself against the haters by strawmanning all his detractors. The video was called Myths About Onision. Onision has seemed to remove this video from his channel, but I found it on Daily Motion. These misconceptions that he totally, definitely destroyed with facts and logic in this video were he's a chauvinist, he starves his wife, he's racist, that he's transphobic, that he's a racist, that he doesn't have heating in his house, that he hates people he disagrees with, that he abuses his wife, and that he's homophobic. The most interesting responses to these are that he disproved he was transphobic by showing that he likes to cross-dress. Onision is afraid of trans which is why he dresses like him. my name, not my story. He disproved being racist by doing blackface. Shut up, you just jealous we're better at sports and got bigger poopies than you. Okay, that's obviously true, but everybody knows that only Dave Chappelle and Robert Downey Jr. can paint their faces to make it look like they're a different race. So my bad, homie. Oh. Hey, not everyone of that skin color talks that way. And he disproved being homophobic by continuing his obsession with the musician Andy Biersack by making out with a picture of him. Also on the 24th, Onision made a video called I Hate My Mom, 10 Things I Hate About Being a Kid, which co-starred his own mom, who people have affectionately nicknamed Crazy Tammy. I'm not sure if this was the first time his mom appeared in a video. Later in January, Onision decided to resurrect his old cult, Seseska, with a series of videos. I discussed Seseska in part one of this series. The first video in this series was titled Seseska, colon, Life After Death. This one one came out on the 26th of January. Greg started off the video by talking about Seseska. He then said he created it when he was 17. I started uh, a religion when I was 17 called Seseska. Thank you for doing that, Dubs. He said he only followed it for a year, then became agnostic. According to the Life of Onion Wiki, both of these statements are false. The Life of Onion Wiki writes, Evidence for the length he followed his 17-year-old version of Seseska are seen throughout the Life of Onion Wiki article. It was extremely prevalent in his early YouTube career. He did not begin identifying as agnostic until around the time he was with Taylor. He says the reason he quit Seseska was because he felt dumb. Um, and the reason I did is just because I felt silly following it. I felt like it was kind of like dumb uh, in the sense that you know, making up your own religion is a very awkward thing. He said, because he is agnostic, he believes in many possibilities, and he would like to. You know, if I had to guess, uh, if I want to play this little religious game, I would, I would go with the following theories that I'm going to express over the next few days. He says he calls it Seseska because it is easier to identify, but it is really made up of ideas and theories from other religions. He announced today's topic will be death and talked about what he believed happened after death. Okay, um, in my experience, a lot of people just stick around when they die. Some people move on, and um, I believe uh, that is possible that these people are going to different planets uh, with different life forms on them, because this is a big universe, um, depending on whether or not they behave properly on this planet. Uh, the theory is that there are many 
planets. There are uh, planets where there's mostly good, and it's it's mostly uh, it's like a heaven, so to speak. And then there's planets that are just filth, you know, that are just saturated with the biggest piles of garbage. Greg ends the video by saying he cursed the people that freak out when he talked about religion. And uh, curse all those people who you know freaked out the moment I said anything about religion because it's okay and it's oh it's healthy to explore these ideas because how do we grow as a society if we don't think about these things you know if we don't come up with new ideas we're still relying on ideas that were made up thousands of years ago because everybody's afraid of being religious due to the probably the bible <laughs> the bible tells uh instructs people to cast out those who have uh, opposing views in many ways in many contexts like they say in many different ways you know why what is so bad about new ideas and change? Onision posted the second video in his Seseska series, titled, Seseska, The Soul, The Next Day. He started off the video by replying to people saying his video implied that if someone is the victim of a crime, they did something bad in their previous life. He says that is not what he was saying. I was just saying, if you've done something bad, you're likely to be reincarnated, according to this theory, um, as a person who's going to be subjected to that crime. Okay, it doesn't mean that's that, that doesn't at all say every person. Okay, that just says some people, maybe. He then elaborated that it's a way for your soul to learn the pain it caused. Then he began to discuss souls. Anyway, so let's go ahead and move on to souls. Uh, what are souls? Um, souls are basically like us. Okay, they're able to do as we do and, and think as we think in many ways. Um, but they're not necessarily fully aware unless they allow themselves to be. A lot of people are limited in their thinking because they can't handle, you can't handle the truth, <laughs> that kind of thing. He said that when you die, you see what you want to see. Then you can reincarnate and choose your next life. A light that leads to something and then you just wind up in purgatory or sitting around forever and ever until you finally accept the fact that maybe your ideas are wrong and there's a bigger universe out there and maybe it's time to move on. You know, that, there's that very old concept. It's time to move on. When your soul accepts, okay, I can, I can deal with whatever's coming my way, I'm ready. That's when the soul is probably subjected to reincarnation, uh, the choice of which body you go to, um, the choice of which life you go to. I don't know, I have no idea what you'd be reincarnated to. There's a lot of theories as to what you could potentially be reincarnated to. Some people would say trees. I don't necessarily believe trees have souls but uh, that could be your belief where you could be re reincarnated into a dog maybe. I mean, if you believe that's possible. Me personally, my belief is that um, human souls can only go in human bodies or something equivalent of human bodies because of the evolutionary stage in that soul. Greg's final video came on the 28th, titled, Seseska, colon, Angels. He started off the video by asking his viewers if they understand the concept of guardian angels. Hey guys, do you understand the concept of guardian angels? Like they're basically sent from God or everybody has a guardian angel that protects them from demons and stuff. I don't know, there's theories out there that I've heard of. I was only taught about guardian angels briefly as a child. In the video, he talks about a lot of weird theories about guardian angels and his made-up religion. And uh, Sezeska is not so different when it comes to guardian angels and the concept, except instead of being created and sent to you by God or whatever, it's created by yourself. Um, you can you can have literally a goat <laughs> as a as a guardian angel. Safety. And what's cool about this is of actually um, interacting with the spirit realm before where they would actually describe people's angels, so to speak. Um, like if you would use, uh, uh, it's like a blind writing. It's where you close your eyes and you do the spiritual writing or you uh, use the uh, talking board, Ouija board, whatever you want to call it, or other forms of communicating with the spirit realm. You can ask them to describe these entities that you created with your mind. And what's amazing, and you don't have to be involved, you can have someone else literally ask them. Greg dipped his feet into his obsession with the singer, Andy Biersek, again at the end of the month. I mentioned in previous parts how this interest in Andy started, and I personally do think he continued this because Biersek's fans gave him views, for showering the singer with compliments. 
It later would border on creepy territory. This Onision X Beersack arc does not end pleasantly, but that's for a later date. Anyways, first on the 29th of January, Greg uploaded a video called Andy Beersack is so hot, where he opens up by complaining that his Seseska videos did not get enough attention, and then proceeded to talk about his love of Andy Beersack. This video currently sits at just over 1 million views, and thus showed Onision's obsession over this man would get him paid. According to the Life of Onion wiki, for years, Greg would make over-the-top obsessive videos and social media postings talking about how attractive Andy is. They were mixed reactions to these types of videos and social media statuses. Many fans of Black Veil Brides, aka Andy Beersack's band, and Onision took them seriously and believed Greg had a fanboy crush on Andy, while many critics believed Greg only pretended to be a fanboy who gained views and subscribers from the BVB fanbase. Others, including Andy and his father, Chris, believed this behavior was all satire on Greg's part, poking fun of fan culture. Greg never quite explained his over-the-top behavior, but has explained his attraction to Andy by saying he's attracted to feminine men. A good number of Onision slash BBB fans began shipping Andy and Greg under the name Grandy. Greg would get some attention from Chris Beersack, aka Andy's father, on Twitter two days later. Chris tweeted, You've got to respect the creative talents of Onision. Every day, he posts something to amuse slash entertain us, dot dot dot, for free. To which Onision responded, Thank you much, smiley face. To which Chris responded, Don't mention it. Please keep doing what you do. Appreciate the laughs you've provided as well as the genuine message behind them. On the day of the Chris Beersack tweets, Greg returned to an old flame. If you watch the other parts, Onision had a brief online relationship with a YouTuber by the name Hannah Minx. It didn't last. Eventually, Hannah Minx stopped regularly uploading her Japanese lesson videos to YouTube, her last video being from 2013. So on the 31st of January, Greg uploaded the first video of a series called Hannah Minx is Missing. The video is no longer available, but this is what the Life of Onion Wiki wrote about it. He started off the video by showing the viewers that he is listed as a rad channel, Hannah's hand-picked featured channels on our YouTube page. He pointed out Hannah had not uploaded a video in five months. He interrupts the video to show his viewers Andy Beersack's father tweeted him. Greg put on a sticker mustache and announced the video will be themed Hannah Minx Come Back. The video consisted of Greg going through pictures of Hannah and making comments and jokes about her and fans that took pictures with her. He pointed out her last tweet was in October. This video received over 1 million views and sparked conspiracy theories about Hannah's departure from YouTube, including theories that she was murdered or kidnapped. And we move to February 2014. Greg uploaded a video featuring his mom on the 4th titled, Meet Onision's Mom. It was a short comedy video about them both being a bit nutty. Same day as this, Onision uploaded a video titled, Why is Jenna Marble so popular? He had previously made a similar video about PewDiePie. It's a very inoffensive video. Again, this year is kind of boring, and I consider this time period to be pretty successful for Onision. But he did say one interesting thing. So here we go again, it says teenage girls love her. You want to be successful, you need teenage girls. In another part, I briefly mentioned Lainybot's ex-boyfriend being abusive towards them. On the 10th of February, according to the timeline on the Life of Onion wiki, this ex sent Lainey a hateful message after harassing them the previous year. This ex wrote, I hope you have a stillborn, you f Around the 22nd of February, Onision uploaded a video titled, Who Am I Really? He seemed to have written admissions on various fortune cookies about all the negatives about himself. He wrote, I've repeatedly attempted to publicly humiliate former friends and exes for things they had done. I've destroyed most every relationship I've had with other YouTubers by being rude towards them. I am a self-made pariah. I've repeatedly given others gifts loaded with an expectation of greater loyalty in response. I am a relentless drama queen, turning small problems into an obsession. I regularly judge people online and isolate myself from them, as if doing so makes me right. A large part of why I am so active online is to keep the attention of others, so I feel not only appreciated, but retain a false sense of value in myself. In reality, I am socially abrasive, emotionally conflicted, and despite my inflated ego, I somehow manage to be simultaneously self-loathing. 
I've been trying to convince myself I am the hero, when in reality, I am just another foolish person in love with a version of themselves that doesn't exist. I act like I am better than a lot of people, when many of those people are more caring, sociable, and selfless than I am or may ever be. These messages were extremely well thought out and self-reflective, and to me, it was almost like Greg realized his problems. Almost, lol. Back to the ex of Laney's. He sent Laney more nasty stuff on the 24th. He wrote, Eat sh and die. Go to hell, Talking about cutting must have gotten Onisi on outrage box. That, or he couldn't stand some people disagreeing with his takes on this serious matter. Because on the 25th of the month, he uploaded another cutting video titled, Why Do Girls Cut Themselves? He seems to have deleted this video, but there are screen caps to confirm its existence. The last point of interest in the month of February was an upload Onision had of a song he created titled, I Could Never Run. The lyrics of the song consisted of only the words, I could never and run. Now we are into the third month of the year, March. Sometime around the second of the month, Onision uploaded a video titled, 10 Reasons I Hate My Son, where according to the Onision drama tumbler, he made a seizure joke that was a clear reference to Shiloh. I could not find the video to check the validity of this. However, the entry to the Onision drama tumbler read, Oh my god, I just watched his newest vid with his mom in it. 10 Reasons Why I Hate My Son, a f***ing classic seizure joke. That's clearly a reference to Shiloh. I f***ing can't with this man-child. It's like I can pop in and out of Onision's drama as time permits me, and he never changes. He's just as disgusting and shitty as ever. Only now it's worse because he has a child. On the 4th of the month, Onision started to go off on social media in a series of rantings about trans people. These will later come to kick him in the bum as his position drastically changed, but this time he wrote to Tumblr, That's it. I'm a panda. No surgery. I just feel like one. So I am. Address me only as Mr. Panda, or you're a bigot slash monster. In another post titled, Physically a man equals physically a man, he wrote, You may have friends that are transgendered. You may also be one yourself. Great. But you freaking out when anyone refers to them as the gender they were born with is ridiculous. It makes you look stupid and delusional. Why? Because we all, including you, know you're wrong. You are literally wrong. Do you live in the real world? Yes. Then we agree what physical features make up a boy and which make up a girl. You cannot behave as a girl, as girls do not have black and white type behaviors. Saying so would be sexist. Do you like to look like many women tend to? That's your choice. And no one should give you grief about it. But when you start to lie and tell people you are something you are literally not, that is when you cross the line. I'm truly sick of being treated like a monster because I call it like it is. You people make up this fantasy world where just because you say something is the way you want it to be, everyone else must automatically play along. And if they don't, you rip them apart. And for what? For being honest! You are a male, so long as you have the sexual organs of a male, while having no female sexual organs simultaneously. This is not my opinion, it's human anatomy 101. If I put a bear suit on and start behaving like I'm a bear, does that make me a bear? Absolutely not. How would you feel? <laughs> How would you feel if people called you a bigot for not believing I'm a bear? You would likely think they are ridiculous. And if you did not think they were, then it would likely be you who is ridiculous. Grow up. Live in reality. If you can't do that, at least know your role and keep your mouth shut about people who base their views on facts rather than delusion. Nobody asked Greg. And on Facebook he wrote, Saying someone is not mentally a boy is sexist as f Oh, you like putting on makeup, wearing a dress, whatever? Cool. Still just a f dude, a dude who wears dresses. That is literally what you are. Not magically a f***ing girl. Still a dude. Feelings do not change your gender. Attitude does not change your gender. You know what does? Surgery. You want to be a girl? Then prove it. But until then, me calling you a girl will always be non-literal. As we both know well what gender you really are. Onision closed out the month by creating a song for his son 
Troy, called I'll Never Stop Loving You, reading directly from the Life of Onion wiki. In the song, he raps about the love he has for his first son, promising he will always love him. The music video featured Greg rapping and random baby items around their house. Lainey and her friend, and Nanny, Selena, were also featured in the music video. It is rumored you can see their baby's reflection in Lainey's sunglasses at one point in the video, and is speculated Greg did this on purpose for artistic effect. The baby's feet can also clearly be seen in a scene, with Lainey sitting in the grass. These glimpses of the baby are significant to fans because Greg and Lainey vowed to not let their children be seen on the internet. The music video was well received by fans. The last point of interest came on the 31st, with Lainey Bot tweeting out an example of the hate they were receiving. Lainey wrote on Twitter, I'm supposed to subject my baby to shit like this? Don't think so. And attached was a photo of someone insulting Lainey's looks. The first video of interest to note of the next month, aka April, is a video entitled Storytime, colon, My Boyfriend is Crazy. It seemed to have some humor at Onision's expense. It also co-starred an attractive woman Onision had been collabing with since last year that I had not yet mentioned. Her name is Jess Lizama. I actually somewhat liked the videos he did with her. If you actually gave me some chuckles over the time they collaborated together. Onision uploaded another installment in his 10 Things series on the 7th of the month titled 10 Things I Hate About Liars, which I made sure to note this particular episode because Greg rants about his hatred of liars and how honest he is to the point it could be parodied. But I'm going to be honest here, unlike many other videos over the years in his career, in this video there is no straw manning about Greg's past relationships and this video was just a pretty typical video you'd expect from any YouTuber to make about not liking liars. Onision made another Hannah Minx video on the 9th titled Hannah Minx is Missing, where he said he texted Hannah and she did not text him back. The thing is, I also texted her on her phone. She didn't text me back. She normally texts me back. And she normally called me every two or three months just to see how things are going. This is just really frustrating to me because it's like the longer it goes on, the more I worry. And then he asked anyone who knew of her whereabouts to please tell him as he was worried. If any of you are in contact with Hannah Minx, please have her update her status or something just to make me feel better. And I'm sure a lot of her viewers better. As you can see, her last video was over eight months ago. I am not sure the exact date of the next part on my timeline. Line. But I noticed a post on the 16th of April mentioning a name change for Mr. Onion. Onision constantly changes his name. It seems sometime, perhaps around this time, he was no longer Greg Jackson, Daniels, or whatever else he went by, but now had the surname of Avaro. We hear about this from an Onision drama Tumblr post reading, Why does Greg change his last name all the time? Like it was Jackson, Daniels, and now Avaro? But I can't remember if there have been more. IDK, it's almost 4am, and I'm reading through every anti-O blog I follow, and I was just wondering about it. This year is a series of mostly moderate successes for Onision. On the 17th of April, he started a parody series on the anime series Death Note. Death Note is something Onision seems to really relate to, though it's hard to pinpoint why. This parody series would give Onision a fair amount of views. And <laughs> let's be honest, his parody was better than the live action Netflix Death Note movie. He posted the second episode of the series on the 25th of the month in a video titled Misa's Death Note Episode 2. Episode 2 got less views than part 1, but but still didn't do too bad with over 400,000 views. Sometime during the year, Onision began paying to advertise his videos before, during, or after other YouTube videos to get traffic to its page. It was noted to be the case on the 29th of April on the Onision drama Tumblr. On to May, Greg posted some more videos and nothing was really of interest from them, but on May 9th, we learned a little more of Greg's sexuality. In the month of May, he first announced he was heterosexual on Facebook, but then claimed to be pan sexual six days later on Tumblr. Very interesting stuff, not really. Next, on the 11th of May, Greg finally learned of what happened to Hannah Minx, writing on social media. I was told Hannah Minx is moving on from YouTube, so any girl with amazing boobs who want to teach people Japanese, please fill the void. And we move on to June. Sometime 
I don't even know if it was this year, but I found an archive of an Onisan video titled Emo Cutters that was uploaded on June 1st of 2014. It's one of his typical videos where he looks up words and comments on them briefly. It would make sense for this to be 2014 because he seems to have an obsession with cutting this year. The video got age restricted on the archive channel. Greg starts the video by looking up emo cutters on Tumblr and proceeds to insult people with mental health problems. Thank you so much for proving that you don't cut for attention by posting pictures of your arm to the internet. If you really wanted help, you would Google it. But instead, you clearly just want attention because you keep posting pictures of your suffering to the internet instead of getting legitimate therapy. Please don't follow my blog, slit, slit, slit. Oh my god, I got more notes. Let's start on my thighs. Oh, I like to use thumbtacks because they're inefficient. Pay attention to me more. You couldn't be more obvious. I find it funny that Greg constantly talks about his depression, which he does do in this video. Wow, it took you till 16 to want to be dead? I wanted to be dead at 14. But you know what? I didn't post to the internet. I didn't resort to cutting myself. I just resorted to staying away from everyone and keeping to myself in my room. And I just pushed through that depression and then later on suffered adult depression, was diagnosed with chronic depression by a medical professional, and eventually found happiness once again. Not once did I think cutting myself would be a solution. Yet disregards how others might deal with it. He makes a weird statement in this video. What you need is a reality check. This shit keeps happening because we act like it's okay. We act like there's nothing wrong with people when they do this. Bro, what? And then he blames white people? And like I said before, 99% of these photos are white people. Why do white people feel so goddamn sorry for themselves? Jesus Christ. After this, on the 4th, Greg uploaded the video, My Marriage Problems. It's similar to videos he had uploaded in previous years, where he almost does like a narrative vlog of his day with some dramatization. He does say this, however. I can't wait till my wife turns 20 so I can trade her in for another 17 year old. Wait, hold on, what the f did you just say? Which is of course a joke, a joke, but not too different than what happened in 2016. But we aren't there yet. Greg uploaded another one of his narrative blogs on the 11th titled, Onision Thoughts, Lainey Bot Divorce? Nothing was interesting about it, but it did reach over 1 million views, which shows that people were actually interested in these weird little gag videos about the two's daily life. We move on to the next month, and sometime in June, date unknown, Greg ruins another YouTuber connection by tweeting out Minecraft is one of the shittiest games ever made, to which the popular YouTuber Sky Does Minecraft responds, at Onision, well I guess that means our collab is off then, to which Onision responds, guess so, to which Sky responds, woo, thank god. Greg would continue this by tweeting out more, at Sky Does Minecraft. I didn't even tweet you in the first place. You at replied me when I stated an opinion about a shitty game. At Sky Does Minecraft. Please, lol. At Sky Does Minecraft. So you have the maturity of an adult, but the sensitivity of a kid? Get over it. I think the game slash players are dumb. Boo hoo. At Sky Does Minecraft. You're being a huge At Sky Does Minecraft. LOL. At Sky Does Minecraft. Someone makes fun of you for playing a game and you get all gooey? Come on, it's an opinion. The game is ret- Onision mentioned this drama in July on the 8th in an upload to his Onision Speaks channel titled Why People Hate Onision. In the video, he mentioned he and Sky planned to collab, but that was ruined. As you guys may know, in Washington State, I encountered Sky Does Minecraft. I didn't know who he was at the time, but he knew who I was. So I see this guy popping his whole upper body out of his car. I don't know how he spotted me in my Prius because I was still driving, but he's popping out the passenger seat like this. Ooh! I guess he expected me to recognize him, but I had no idea. Anyway, he tweeted me. He and I later on planned to collaborate after I asked him if he wanted to. You know, because barely any YouTubers live in Washington. And this is a response he gave me after I said that they're all dumb. Well, I guess that means our collab is off then. I responded. Yes, so. Did I do a good impression of myself? He then brings up all of his other dramas. Anyway, let's talk about other YouTubers who hate me. Believe it or not, Shane and I have been here and there for some time now. Here being friends, there being not friends. And most every single time our friendship has ended, it's been my fault. Here's me dumping Seer, just like I dump all my friends because I'm a drama queen. Anyway, way back in the day, I said a bunch of things about circumcision. One of the tweets were directed at him because I don't understand how anyone would willingly let someone mutilate their child's genitals. It doesn't matter if your child's a girl or a boy. I've heard of people dying from circumcision, but I've never heard of anyone dying from not being circumcised. It's just stupid and it mutilates their forever. Anyway, since then I apologize to Shay Carl for making a scene about it. It wasn't really my business. And he even shows an email from his ex-girlfriend, AJ, for some reason. Okay, finally, here's the conversation that Shane and- Oh, nope, that's my ex trying to be friends with me. Okay. Yeah, it's been three years. Stop. He also mentioned Hannah, who hasn't responded to him in over a year at this point. 
<laughs> oh my god, look at her bow. Yeah, Hannah. Still haven't heard from you in a long time. I gotta figure out whether or not to add you to the list of people who hate me or the people I'm cool with. So just so you know, I changed my number. So if you did try to call in the last few months, I didn't get anything. We used to be bros once. Boop squeeze. Bro, stop. The drama between Onision and Skyda's Minecraft was enough for Drama Alert to cover it. Then, on the 16th, Onision uploaded another part of his thoughts videos, which is the title of those narrative logs I described earlier that he uploads. Nothing of interest really here except that Lainey kept mentioning having a girlfriend. She doesn't know I know she's texting her girlfriend right now. Stupid bitch. The only reason I'm with you is because my girlfriend's not rich. Just go to bed already. My girlfriend's steaming up some dinner for me. I'm smiling, you happy? Now please get the f away from me so I can talk to my girlfriend. On July 16th, 2014, Greg uploaded a Speaks video titled, Onision Hates His Fans, plus Hannah Mink's Fan Reality. In the video, Greg explains why he believes he should not thank his fans for his success. Many YouTubers do establish significant profit from their fans, but that's not exactly relevant. And the reason I say it's not relevant is because YouTube is a transaction. The obvious transaction I'm referring to is me investing my time and effort to create an entertaining video, delivering that to an audience, and in response gaining numerous things. As you mentioned, monetary gain, the glory of fame, and of course whoever has sex with you enjoys it a little bit more. He also uses Hannah Minx for a short part of the video as an example. He shows that her fans stopped tweeting about her after she left YouTube. Let me show you something. This is, yes, again, Hannah Minx's channel. She hasn't made a video in 11 months, and I seem to be the only fan that's still talking about it. My point in bringing her up isn't a question. Where are her fans now? She hasn't made content in such a long time that her fans have basically given up on her. On the 18th of the month, Greg uploaded a video called, Why Do I Have Love Handles? And What Are They? to his Speaks channel, where he, you guessed it, googled stuff and responded. He does a lot of these faux body positive videos on this channel over the years. And we move on to the 8th month of the year, August. Onision, despite his views doing okay and not really needing controversy for views, decided to post a long rant to Facebook about circumcision around August 2nd, writing, The foreskin serves as an anti mechanism in that it can cause pain to a man forcing his pee inside someone who is not lubricated. That's a fact. Circumcision was invented to help prevent people from masturbating. So horny men plus no anti mechanism? Obvious bad situation. Luckily, circumcision did not stop people from masturbating their own now mutilated the foreskin has a number of benefits. One, bigger size. Two, moving parts. Three, easier masturbation. Four, protects sensitivity of head. Five, foreskin itself is more sensitive slash improves sexual sensation. Six, helps discourage Seven, are we seriously still debating this? You can argue all you like. A man intact is simply whole. A man who is not intact is literally less of a man as he does not have all the parts a naturally born man has. The definition of mutilation goes hand in hand with circumcision. One of the best gifts you can give your kids is the choice to decide themselves what they want to do with their bodies later in life. Having a foreskin is perfectly safe, healthy, awesome, and every man is entitled to one. God it. Also, due to all this controversy over the years, at some point, Greg reached number seven on the worst YouTube channel list, which was noted on the Onision drama Tumblr on the 6th of August. Onision continued his edgy obsession with Death Note by uploading a music video titled Black Ink on the 9th of August, where he cosplays as various Death Note characters and sings. Next, on the 18th of August, according to the Life of Onion wiki timeline, Lainey and someone who will become important later in the timeline, Sarah, began to talk. The timeline writes, Sarah and Lainey begin talking to each other online. Sarah is freshly 14. Sometime after this, Lainey would tell Sarah Greg's p size. Regina, Sarah, and Lainey would also form a group chat where they would post thirst trap photos of each other sometime after this. Greg continued his obsession with Andy Beersack by uploading the video, Why is Andy Beersack so hot? On the 21st, it was a typical Onision Speaks video where he Googles something and then rants. This time, ranting why Andy Beersack is so hot. It reached over 2 million views, which makes me think that he def made these videos because fangirls really like this, and not so much because it was his opinion. But that's just my humble opinion. We move on to September, and sometime in September, according to the Life of Onion wiki timeline, Greg posts a tirade of Facebook statuses berating and humiliating Lainey's younger sister when she allegedly expressed an opinion about sex and size. Lainey does not publicly defend her and claims that it is a private matter that she handled through private messages. Greg's initial post to Facebook read, Hey, redacted in-law. 
Sorry you miss your ex because his p is bigger than your current boyfriend's. It's sad to know you're shallow slash generally an awful person who judges their boyfriends based on superficial sh and that you have no real understanding of love. I would have kept this private, but I'm tired of hearing story after story about how consistently stupid, materialistic, and horrible you are to people on a regular basis. Maybe this will be a wake-up call for you to get your sh** together and try being a decent human being for once in your life. Also, bad idea telling us you did ecstasy and other illegal drugs. Now your parents finally know and can do a better job saving you from yourself. In another status, he says, If you get upset at someone for telling the world exactly how things are, you shouldn't be mad at them, but rather yourself for being unable to accept reality. He continues in another post by writing, Was asked to remove the status about my blank, saying she misses her ex because it's is bigger than her current boyfriends, among many other stupid things she says that I have to hear about day after day, despite me repeatedly stating I want nothing to do with her. I genuinely hate people who judge their significant others for their breast size, p size, or otherwise. It doesn't matter if they're fat, skinny, tall, or short. You should love them for who they are or not be with them at all. Love does not equal sex. Love does not equal body type. Love does not equal money, popularity, or other bullshit don't agree then get the f out of my life in one status greg writes if you judge your significant other on boob or p size you are simply a pile of worthless sh in another one he writes if everyone called each other out on their they would be far less bullsh then in another one he wrote rejected stop telling my wife to leave me stop telling my wife to threaten me if I don't take the statuses down. Stop telling her to steal my phone so she can delete it herself. What I said was completely true about you. Accept it. You openly judge your significant others based on the size of their genitals. Equals, you are shallow as f You repeatedly use illegal drugs. Equals, you're wasting your life slash mind slash risking imprisonment for your stupidity. My statuses broke no laws, no names were even said, and I have the right to post my opinion about obviously stupid people in my life. In another post, he writes, Someone I cared for asked me to remove the statements I made earlier. Out of respect for them, I have complied. I still fully support what I said. I simply wish to ease the life of the individual who requested the removal. If you ever judge your significant other based on their height, weight, breast size, size, or otherwise, you do not deserve love from anyone, as you clearly have no idea what love even is. On the 3rd of September, Onision got into drama with another online personality, someone who went by the name, Sorry I'm Alex. According to screenshots of tweets I found on the Onision drama Tumblr, Onision lent this person $500, and they never paid him back. According to these tweets, Onision was only contacting them on Twitter because they ignored him everywhere else, and it had been over a week since they promised to pay Onision back. Onision wrote in one tweet, at Sorry I'm Alex, it's been over a week since you promised you'd pay back the the 500 plus dollars you owe me. Don't lie slash steal like this. Pay me back ASAP. Sorry I'm Alex would respond to Onision days after this. He wrote in one tweet, at Pierce Thelex, two tickets was $80 total. I'm not good at math, but I think $80 is a little bit less than $500. And instead of, at least from what is on Tumblr, responding to Onision, he just insulted him. He wrote in one tweet, at least I'm not like this towards you guys. Onision finally asked if Sorry I'm Alex ever had plans to eventually pay him back, to which Alex responded, I'm on f***ing vacation, the fick, you lou, expect me to get a f***ing job out her, doubts can a flan, f***ing, you back. I don't know what that means. Alex also tweeted this, Give me till next week, I'll pay you back. You can stop Burchimf. He would continue to try to poke at Onision, also tweeting out, At Onision, you have to remember, I'm a piece of sh and I'm trash. This was not good enough for Onision. And the next day, he asked for the money again, to which Alex responded, At Onision, if you keep annoying the f out of me, I'm not gonna pay you shit. Sam, I'm out of the f***ing country. What the f*** do you want me to do? Shut the f*** up and stop stalking my Twitter and annoying me about this stupid f***ing payment just so you can get more publicity. I didn't sign an agreement with you or a contract or anything, so I don't even have to pay you back. It's, it was all my decision to want to pay you back, because that's a logical thing. But you're a f***ing asshole and rude and calling me a thief when how the f*** is it stealing if I, one, I didn't even go to Seattle, two, there's no way I could even get the 500 for myself.
And Alex just continued to antagonize. Adonision, trash. At Onision, onion. Adonision, no wonder every YouTuber hates you. My god, and to think I used to look up to you. Adonision, you have like 3,000 YouTube channels and you make so much f***ing money per day, so I'm sure you're not in desperate need for $500. Adonision, suck my f***ing on the 14th of September, there is a post to the Onision drama Tumblr to give more info on this drama, which reads, Lainey liked Alex's videos on Vine. She fangirl tweeted at him for a while, along with the singer of the band of Mice and Men. At one point, she told her followers to get them to tweet her by the morning. BTW, this is how she caught Greg's attention through Twitter. Alex followed her, and I guess they all hit it off and decided to collab. Onision bought a plane ticket for Alex to fly to Washington. I'm pretty sure this is what he does for a lot of out-of-state people he has made videos with. I guess he would work off the money by making videos. Not 100% sure, but I think what happened was Alex showed up at the airport and had a panic attack, so he ended up not flying. He told Onision he would pay him back, but kept delaying the date he'd supposedly have the money. Onision decided to take the matter public, and now that's what we see. Fantastic! Now, on to the 10th of September. Onision finally got the attention of a certain drama forum. That forum was Kiwi Farms. On this day, Onision received a thread in the beauty parlor, which is a subforum focused on drama that women like to follow. The opening post of the thread reads, have you ever hated someone so much that you wanted to tell the whole world how much you hate them? Well, meet Gregory James Daniel, also known as Onision. Okay, how has no one made a thread about this asshole yet? I mean, my god. I think the first time I ever heard about this guy was while browsing Know Your Meme. He is an atheist vegan who outright states that he hates the Bible and everything in it. And when people get offended, this is how he responds. And linked was the re the Bible video. That's right. He antagonizes every single single last religious person for believing what they want, and that is not all. And then after that, they linked 10 things I hate about meat eaters. He demonizes meat eaters, like they are all child molesting Nazi vampires who murder puppies. Now, I am not for unnecessary cruelty to animals, but animals are meant to eat animals. Yes, eating too much meat can be unhealthy, but most people have a balanced diet. Oisian is an absolute d**kwad in real life. Here is him criticizing a fan for having suicidal thoughts because of their abusive mother. And below was a video of Onision linked. He keeps saying that it is her fault for having these thoughts, like he is some messiah slash psychiatrist. What doesn't help is that he is forming a cross in the thumbnail like he believes he is God. This guy pisses me off to literally no end. He is that, just that guy that you love to hate. Oh, and here's his Encyclopedia Dramatica page. Regarding Onision's name, his marriage history and name changes are so frequent that it's reasonable to suspect he's trying to hide his history. Here is a list of every possible permutation of his name. Gregory James Daniel, Gregory James Jackson, Gregory James Avaro, Gregory Daniel, Gregory Jackson, Gregory Avaro, James Gregory Jackson, James Greg Jackson, James Jackson, James Gregory Avaro, James Greg Avaro, James Avaro, Greg James Daniel, Greg James Jackson, Greg James Avaro, Greg Daniel, Greg Jackson, Greg Avro, Taylor Elaine Anderson, Taylor Elaine Avro, Taylor Elaine Jackson, Taylor Anderson, Taylor Avro, Taylor Jackson, Laney Avro, Laney Jackson, Kai Jackson. The board was mostly dead for the rest of the year, and the last post from that year was from September 12th, 2014. The frequency of posts to Onision's Kiwi Farm thread would ramp up over the years. After not receiving payment from the Sorry I'm Alex guy, sometime around the 23rd of September, Greg decided to tweet publicly that he forgave the guy, writing, At Sorry I'm Alex, your debt to me is forgiven. Keep the money you owed for yourself slash your family. Hope you find yourself in a better place soon. At Sorry I'm Alex, as it has been weeks and you still haven't sent the $624 debt you promised to repay me. It is clear you need the money more. While he was at it, he also publicly apologized to Hank Green, the founder of VidCon. On the 25th, of September, Onision had a bit of a meltdown on Tumblr at the people who used the website and those who called him a rapist on the website. He first posted a long rant saying he is, in fact, not a rapist. No more games. There's a game a lot of people like to play on Tumblr. It involves them, repeatedly, spreading criminal level accusations about others without ever really doing anything about them. It's literally just people saying someone else committed a horrible crime and that's it. No calling the police, no getting a lawyer, nothing. Just attacking the person they say is guilty with insults. Why? If you really believe what you said, why do you just talk to the internet? They are not the police. Right now the rumor is that Onision is a 
rapist. If you actually believed this, you would go to the police and supply them your evidence of this crime. Instead, what do you do? You sit there behind your screen, running your mouth without any sense of responsibility or honor. The fact is, Onision has never anyone, nor would he. If there were any even remotely legitimate proof of these accusations, they would have been turned into the police by now, and Onision would have been arrested. Why would this have happened already? Because people are desperate to hurt Onision in whatever way they can. Onision has posted repeatedly, instructing people to turn whatever evidence they think they have into the police, to prove their words are completely empty. He's done this repeatedly for months now, revealing how dishonest these accusers are, and still nothing. They just keep Keep talking and talking despite their obvious faults being brought to light. Knowing people want to see Onision suffer and knowing he is in fact still a very free man shows you that the people proclaiming what a horrible person they think he is legally have nothing on him. Why? Because Onision is not a lawbreaker. His history shows an inclination to protect people from sexual predators, having been a military police officer himself. So do yourself a favor and stop playing games. Police know what most false accusations look like. They likely get them every day. If you're going to accuse someone of make sure they actually someone before you do it. This is common sense, but it still escapes the minds of so many people on Tumblr. Logic also tells you, if you do find someone has someone else, the first place you should go is the police, not Tumblr. Tumblr is for people who like to call themselves victims. The police station is for people who actually are victims. Put up or shut up. It's simple. Are you finally going to go to the police with your alleged evidence? Or are you going to admit you have nothing on Onision? And the reason you're attacking him is for your own satisfaction? Time to grow up. People then began to bombard him with asks, telling him not to victim blame those who go to social media about alleged sexual crimes against them. Onision responded to all of these messages by saying that the people going online to claim abuse and should instead go to the police to receive justice. On the 27th of September, a video was pointed out on the Onision drama Tumblr of Onisians titled Blackface Comedy Controversy. I do not know when this video was made as it does not appear on YouTube or via Google search, but it appears that Greg dons on blackface himself. We move to October. Sometime in October, Onision launched his next iteration of the Onision forums, this time as the Onision community, hosted on Onision.com. According to the Life of Onion Wiki timeline, usership tanks due to poor software used. Reading directly from the Life of Onion Wiki, the OC, or Onision community, was a message board website created by Greg in 2014. It used the domain Onision.com, which was previously used to house Greg's Onision Tumblr account. Unlike Greg's Onision forums, he did not participate much on this website, and kind of just let it do its own thing right off the bat. It has become a platform for young board members to vent their personal problems, and to give and or receive advice from other members. The website would meet controversy in 2015, and we we will get to that when we get there. One video that has always stuck out to me came out during this time. That is the video titled, Lainey Does Gymnastics, that was published on the 3rd. It doesn't stand out to me because of any drama, but instead because it is perhaps the only time I've seen Lainey partake in anything that they seem like they enjoyed. Lainey, or now known as Kai, comes off as, well, a wet blanket. But in this video, you can see the young parent hopping around a gymnasium, showing off their skills. On the 20th of October, Greg uploaded a video titled, Feminism Hate. Why do people hate feminists? If you were not around during this time on YouTube, anti-feminism and anti-social justice warrior YouTube on the internet started to ramp up, and women began to speak out against the ideologies of modern-day feminism, something that is their right to do. Onision decided to upload a short video calling any woman who's against these ideals stupid. You people are so f***ing stupid. And this is me explaining not only why some girls are against feminism, but why you're a total f***ing moron for being against feminism. He did this because Greg, in all of his wisdom, had the ability to Google feminism and this definition is what defines the movement as a whole and all the actions during this time. To all you morons who are too f***ing stupid to look up the definition of feminism before you make one of those asinine signs full of ignorance, this is the f***ing definition. The advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. Not superiority, you f***ing morons. Equality. Totally. The month of October closes with an event on the 29th. 
On the 29th of October, Lainey tweets that they and Regina are officially dating. At the time, it is not taken seriously because Lainey, Regina, and Sarah would often tweet false information to troll detractors. We are now in November. Onision gets to meet Andy Beersack, finally, around this time. We know about this because on the 7th, Greg tweeted, Andy Beersack, dot dot dot, gorgeous in person, just like his pics. Thank you, at Chris A. Beersack, setting this up, smiley face. Someone on the Onision drama Tumblr dug through Andy Beersack's dad's YouTube and found that the father of Andy Beersack was quite the fan of Onision. And soon, because of the meeting, selfies with Greg and Andy began to flow forth. Onision uploaded a video with Andy sometime around the 9th, though he did remove it. Typing the URL from this tweet into the Wayback Machine gave me this title. Lainey and Onision forever, featuring Andy Beersack, hashtag BVB4. And I found this screen recording from Daily Motion of what the video consisted of. Sorry. Hello? Hey, Onision, it's Andy Beersack. Uh. Hi. We're short on crew right now. I know this is kind of last minute, but can you drop everything and come on tour with me? I would love that more than anything. It'll likely be like a 10 year commitment minimum. Yeah, 10, 10 years is perfect. You are a single guy, right? There's no commitments or anything holding you back? Uh, no, no, yeah, I'm single. There's no relationships are stupid and people waste the time, you know. So. Okay, awesome. We'll see you soon. So... Bye! Forever! On the 23rd of the month, brings us another Onision Speaks video, where he just Googles stuff, which he's done a lot of these that I have not mentioned. But this one was of interest because it was, why do people stay in abusive relationships? Greg actually listed off reasonable reasons in this. But what was of interest was that he mentioned his age old point that when you dump someone, it means that person that got dumped was at fault. You gotta realize the fucker that's gonna walk around talking shit about you when you're the one who dumped them isn't gonna look very good to anyone with experience in relationships. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Finally, here comes December, and on the first day of the month, Greg announced that he had just finished his final edit of his book, and had two final edits before its release. If you consume a lot of Onision-themed content on the platform that is YouTube, Onision has an author will be an interesting part of the series. Next, on the 10th of December, Greg got his first ever LolCow thread focused on him and Lainey. LolCow.farms is an image board. It has a mostly female user base. The opening of the thread read, Extreme LolCow used to be in the top 100 YouTube, now in the top 700s. Praise on underage fans. His current wife was 16 when they began dating. Cheats on every girl he's ever dated slash married. Thinks all meat eaters are murderers. Compares alimony to slavery. Put his turtle under a plastic bin out in the sun in the middle of summer and was shocked to find it dead an hour later. Says he's a feminist and that women are all attention-seeking, greedy, succubus in the same sentence. Stepped on and burned a Bible while paying for his wife to attend a Christian school. Caused his ex fiance to miscarry by slamming her into a door frame. Created a skinny pack with his ex wife so she'd remain sexually attractive to him. Got his new wife pregnant at 18 and now they have a son named Troy. The list goes on and on. On the 20th of December, Onision combined all his Death Note videos together to create a 26 minute parody and uploaded it. This reached 4 million views and was somewhat funny. The last thing of interest I found in the year was a post on the Onision drama Tumblr on the 28th about Onision copyright claiming a video criticizing him, titled, Joking about suicide? Really, Onision? Onision will copyright claim as much as he can over the years. I myself have experienced this. And that's where we close out the year. Onision had really calmed down on his attacks on his exes. He did spend a decent amount of this year uploading content I think a lot of his fans enjoyed, rather than his usual oversharing. Sure, he posted a lot about cutters that rub people the wrong way. He had some bad run-ins with other YouTubers, but this year was a good year for Onion Boy. But folks, I'm going year by year. So next is 2015. I can't promise it was an interesting year either. If I remember my Onision lore well, 2016 is going 
going to be the next very interesting time. But here we are. I like to thank my patrons listed here. If you like this series and want to support it, as well as my other content, please consider becoming a patron. I'd especially like to thank my $20 and over patrons. $20 and over patrons get special artwork I draw for them. Again, if you like this and other long form content on internet lore, please consider becoming a patron. I kind of put off doing this one because kind of boring. So next time we're going to explore 2015, maybe it'll be more interesting. I don't know. We'll see. Till then, suffer lightly.